What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, today I want to take a moment to talk about using markers to help define your export ranges. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen, when you choose the export mixdown option, as opposed to just choosing between loop, we also have this option to choose between start and end marker, and that's useful, and that's actually what's used by default to define the in point and the out point when sending to the Studio One project page. But we also have between each marker and between the selected markers. And as you see over here, you can choose between the different markers that you want to export. So when I first got Studio One and I moved over from Pro Tools, uh, and I had been using Pro Tools for about 15 years or so, and I had also spent a bit of time in Logic Pro, the first thing that I saw was export between each marker. And I thought to myself, man, that's going to be really, really useful. Because if, for example, I have a session where I have markers that are defining an in point and an out point, I could use those to define my export range. So I went ahead and chose the export mixdown option. I chose between each marker, set my format, and I exported, and things didn't work quite as I expected. So let's export this based on between each marker, and let's have a quick look at the results. So it's exported this file over here. Now, if we scroll to our song folder, you'll see that in the mixdown folder, we have all these separate folders. So we have song one, and you'll see that we have export between markers. We have song two, track name, export between markers, song three, song four, song five. So what is that doing? Well, essentially when you use export mixdown, it's creating a folder with the marker number and the marker name according to what you have it named in your Studio One song. And then it's giving everything the same track name. So all of these have the same name, but they're residing in a different folder. So the first time I used this, I thought to myself, okay, well, that's kind of useful, but then I have to go and rename all of these files and I have to, I don't need these folders. I actually want them all to be in the mixdown folder. So this isn't really what I'm looking for. So it was the first and last time I ever used it. Then I was speaking to a good friend of mine by the name of Don Barnes. Uh, he runs Red Barnes Audio. He's doing a ton of great work for Studio One. If you're into voiceover, narration, any post-production type workflows for Studio One, you're definitely going to want to check out his channels and his support groups. He's doing some amazing work. So he was mentioning to me that he uses the markers workflow all the time. And I said, yeah, but it's not really doing what I want it to because it just creates all these subfolders and the track name is the same. And he mentioned something to me, and I want to give him full credit for this because he said, okay, but did you try it with using export stems versus export mixdown? And my answer to that was no, I didn't. So let's use the export stems option instead of export mixdown. Now, I've already covered this in detail, so I'm not going to go any further with that. But what I will say is when you use export mixdown, that it's automatically exporting the main outs. But... When we use export stems, we have an option to choose the main outs. So technically speaking, we could also export our mix down using the export stems option as long as we check off main outs over here in the channel section. Now, in terms of file name prefix, I'm going to delete this and let's leave our format to wave 2448. We will choose between each marker and we will close after export. Let's do this now using the export stems option with the main outs checked. And again, we're using between each marker. We'll click OK. Now, take a look at this. This is a completely different workflow. So when we chose the mixdown option, it created a folder with the marker number and the marker name. And then every single track essentially had the same name. In this case, I've just chosen to name it export between markers, which is my song name. Now let's go to the stems folder, which is automatically created the minute you export stems. And let's take a look at what happens. So we'll see that we have 01 song one dash main outs. 01 song two dash main outs, 03 song three. So what's happening is it's using the marker name. It's also adding the marker number. I kind of wish there was an option to not have that added, but this is what Studio One is doing by default. And then because of the way that the export stems option works, it's also appending dash main outs by default. Now, Full disclosure, if you didn't want to have the dash main outs, a little shortcut that we can do, let's delete those stems 
And let's do the same thing again, but I'm going to double click main outs and I'm going to delete it. So it essentially is blank in terms of it doesn't have a name for that field. Now, same thing again. I want to click none and we're going to enable this, which is our main outs. Let's delete our file name prefix. And again, between each marker, let's go ahead and click that. Now you see we have song one, song two, song three, song four, song five. The only thing that we would have to get rid of at this point, if we wanted to, to just clean things up a little bit, is we would have to get rid of all the different numeric prefixes that were added by Studio One by default. So that's something that you could do manually just by coming in here and deleting these. It takes a little bit of time, but you know what? For the sake of having a really, really quick export, it's not that bad. So in a matter of whatever that took me, 30 seconds, I've just exported five different exports using the export stems feature. Now, in order for me to do that using the export mixdown, I would have had to select this and then I would have had it to define my loop range and then I would use the export mixdown option. And then I would have to name each file and I would have to obviously choose the format, choose between the loop, choose these options, and then these would all show up in my mix down folder. So here's the deal. If you do a little bit of work ahead of time and you incorporate this into your workflow, it can save you a ton of time when it comes to exporting your deliverables. Now, if you're just mixing stereo tracks with a basic in point and out point, this really isn't gonna help out a lot, but let's say you're using Studio One to do any type of post-production, maybe an audio book with chapters, uh, narration, maybe you're doing some audio slides that you need to add to a presentation, like a keynote presentation or something like that. And as long as you have the names and you name your markers ahead of time, this makes your export super, super easy. So instead of taking a look at a blank session, let's look at this in practice. So I've got a mix pulled up and this is something that I'm incorporating this workflow into. So the basic way that this happens is that I'm getting files from the composer. He works in Logic, and he's essentially giving me one long file, which equals all the different deliverables that we have to work with. He's also creating the markers in Logic Pro, and he's exporting a MIDI file, and I'm basically importing that tempo map into my Studio One Mix file, so I have the proper names ahead of time. What that means is that I can name my markers so that they are the proper name. And then when I use the export markers workflow, I'm actually able to deliver all of these mixes all at the same time. So if we take a look at this project over here, you'll note that I'm using the arranger track and I like to use both of them. I'll use the markers for one purpose and the arranger for another. And we have shortcuts to move to the previous and next marker arranger sections. And we also have shortcuts to move to the previous and next markers. So between markers and arrangement blocks, this helps my workflow quite a bit. But if we take a look at the way this is set up, essentially, let's bring our arranger track back in. I have my full song over here. I have my 60 second edit over here. I have a 60 second alternate edit. I have my 30 second. 30 second alt. And then I have sting one, sting two, and sting three. Sting two, sting three. So I have all these deliverables that are lined up on my timeline. Now you'll also note that I have an X indicated in between these sections. So the way that this works is that it will export from one marker to the other. So if this song is meant to end at this point over here, this is where all the decays are essentially gone. That's where I want this particular cue to end. I simply add an X because Studio One will also create a little export over here, but they're all named X. So I'm able to very quickly take all of those files and select them and just throw them in the trash. But then the great thing is when it comes time for me to export, instead of having to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separate exports using the export mix down option, naming these all, uh, choosing all the options, I can essentially do them in one shot. It's very, very simple. So I would just choose my export stems dialog and then I just need to choose whatever I need to export. In this case, again, it would be the main outs. So I could delete my file name prefix. Now keep in mind, in order for this to work properly, my markers are already properly named according to what I want the export to be. And this is actually something that the composer is doing 
on his end. So I'm just importing it and just bringing this into my workflow. Now, after I choose between each marker, it's just a matter of me exporting, and then I can export each mix offline, and it'll just fire through the process. Now, at the end result is basically something along the same lines as this. So, for example, if I come into my songs, production mixes, we'll go to Tiptoe Strut, I'll go to my stems. So, here is an example of all of these files that were exported by the markers. Now, I did have to go in there and remove the 01, 02, 03 in terms of the numeric value of the marker that Studio One assigned, but that's all I had to do. But in order for me to export these all in one shot and come in and just delete a couple numbers, it's actually much quicker than me having to choose export mix down and fill in the track name and choose all the options and do those one at a time. Because every single deliverable that I set was all exported offline one after the other. And then all I had to do was just tidy up any additional characters, like those numbers that were in the intro or the beginning. So this is a really, really useful feature to be able to use. You can just fire through a whole bunch of exports all at once. And the other great thing is I'm choosing between each marker, but let's say that I needed to do a revision and I needed to do, maybe I had a mix note that came in that said, hey, for the 60 second alt, can we bring down this section over here? I could simply export just that one section. So instead of, again, instead of choosing my cycle range, I could say, right, I need to export my tiptoe strut 60 second alt, and it's gonna export this range from here to here. So that's using the between each marker preference when exporting, more specifically using the export stems workflow and choosing main outs versus choosing export mix down because we have a really nice file structure and as long as our markers are named, all of our track names will be named accordingly as well. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are enjoying this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.